Welcome to another Art of Composing daily vlog. Uh, you will have noticed that there was no daily vlog yesterday. I like to at least take one day off a week. Yesterday was Sunday, so I figured it was as good a day as any. And today I thought I would talk about something that happened to me today, and it, it relates a little bit to the episode where I talked about my daily routine, um, but it's slightly different. So today uh, I had big plans. I was going to sit down and try to work my way through a bunch of cues on the latest episode of my soap opera. And what I found is that ideas just didn't seem to be coming today. And I know a lot of people in the past have asked me about uh, writer's block or composer's block, whatever you want to call it. And it's, it's one of these subjects that everybody's going to face at some point in their composing career. So you're going to sit down and just feel like nothing's happening. And I thought in this episode I'd just talk about a little, a uh, few of my tips to deal with it. So. First thing to do, I think, is to ignore it and attempt to compose as best as you can. And that's really what I did today is, uh, regardless of the fact that, you know, after a little while I felt like no really good ideas were coming, um, I still sat down and I tried to do the work and just get something down. Now today I was working directly in my DAW digital performer, um, so there's no, no writing and um, that's something I'm going to talk about in a second. But, but I at least made a solid effort, sat down. Um, I had to do some more spotting on this episode, so that took up a, a significant amount of time in the morning. But once I finally sat down to actually write music, um, I, I gave it my all, and even though I wasn't 100% happy with what was coming out, it was something. And the, the benefit to, to doing that and just pushing yourself and working through these periods where you feel like you've got writer's block and you feel like nothing good is happening, um, is that a lot of times you just have to work through the bad ideas. Uh, you have to sit down and figure out what it is that you really don't want. And a lot of times it actually takes composing the music to do that, to figure out what you don't want. So tomorrow I feel like I'm probably going to come to this uh, project and, and to this episode with better ideas. One, because I will have spent more time just thinking about the episode, watching it, spotting it, and, and that kind of stuff. But also, uh, because I, I spent the time to try to get something out of my brain, right? It's like, it's like uh, sometimes you, you get a buildup of ideas and, and they're really good and you just know what's going to work for a scene or, or whatever it is. I mean, it just could be music not connected with film scoring or anything like that. Um, you just get a good idea of what you want to do. Other times you sit down and you don't really know what it is that you want to do, but you it's kind of like uncovering a statue in a block of marble. You kind of have to chip away at it and, and work through the rough edges of your music in order to find really what the core of it is and what the real idea maybe you're trying to get to. Um, now the other thing that I wanted to talk about though is uh, some strategies that I'm going to use tomorrow to try to overcome this writer's block. So uh, you know one thing I like to do obviously is if you're really coming up against you know, like you've, you've worked for a number of hours, nothing's happening, then maybe it is time to just call it for the day. You know, today I felt tired. I don't know if it was the eclipse or what, which was at least uh, uh, over here was a little underwhelming because we only got like 50% of the sun blocked and, and we didn't have any cool eclipse glasses. So we just took a, you know, a cereal box and poked a hole in it. It worked. I mean, we got to see the cool little you know, like half moon looking thing, but it wasn't very impressive. So, and it got a little bit dark and I don't know, like a reddish color around here. So I'm going to say that that's the reason why I couldn't compose today. That's, that's my excuse. But I don't even know where I was going with that. Nonetheless, I, I took a break, right? For the rest of the day, I kind of did some other things. It's not that I completely stopped working. I just, I just focused on other things that weren't necessarily writing music. And, and sometimes you just need to do it. You need to work through a little bit of the, the difficult period of not knowing what to write and then just call it for the day, get a good night's sleep, and then come back tomorrow. Now tomorrow, one of the strategies that I'm going to use is um, sometimes I find that better ideas come when I'm composing by hand. And in Digital Performer in particular, I like to map out my cue and then go into the QuickScribe, which is just the notation part of the software, and print out blank staff paper for the cue. And the benefit of that is that you will have mapped out all your hit points and you're actually looking at states. You know, you're not just looking at a kind of this infinite piano roll that all of us have to look at when we're scoring stuff. You're looking at a certain number of bars until you get to the end at a certain tempo. And 
I've found for me personally that I can I can comprehend what I need to do musically a lot more that way. So particularly the form of my music, I can comprehend it a lot better. So so that's one strategy I'm going to use. Um, you know, another strategy is just kind of uh, trying to imagine what other music will work that I haven't written. You know, almost like doing my own temp score, but it's you know not not for editing purpose. Uh, or editing purposes or, or anything like that. It's not an intense process. I'll just go into iTunes, I'll play the film, and then at the same time I'll just click play on some piece that I think is going to work, and I'll just see how they meld. Does, is the orchestrational choices in this piece, do they work for this scene? Or, you know, is the tempo right? Is the mood right? Whatever it is. And you can play around with musical ideas that way really easily. And and I found for me it's it's very effective. Now sometimes I've even mapped out things like for one cue that I did for a short film, I took um, Barber's Adagio for strings and I mapped out his form and I saw how that would fit into the the film I was doing and how I can match his form and and the types of phrasing he was using. I really got in depth on it. Other times I just kind of want a general feel and that's all I'll do. I'll just play it a little bit in the background. But those those two strategies. Getting back to paper and pencil and the piano and and trying to find some other music that fits. Don't feel like that that makes you, you know, a cheater or anything like that as a film composer. Our job as film composers is to elicit reactions from the people watching. And one of the best ways we can elicit reactions is by referencing sounds and music that people already know. I mean, there's a reason why you can go through movies and say, oh, this is this composer taking from this great classical composer, or, you know, this is from this sound right here. It's because our job is not necessarily just to write pure, you know, complete, you know, abstract music for the sake of writing music. It's, it's to enhance the story, enhance the emotional content, things like that. So, you know, kind of to sum it up, had a tough day composing. I want to be honest with everybody. You know, ev uh, everybody's going to face it. I face it. You'll face it. Um, and you just have to not be down about it. Everybody gets writer's block sometimes. And the critical thing is to sit down and still write some music, even if you throw it away the next day, even if you hate it. More often than not, I find when I take a, uh, take a rest from it, I come back the next day, I actually like it. It just needs one or two things that are tweaked. So, a lot of times you think you have writer's block, it's just emotions or being tired or whatever it is. Um, stand up, take a rest like usual, and then figure out a way to rewrite something in a different way. You know, if you've got to sit down, like I said, with paper and pencil, do that. Um, if you've got to sing it along and, and you know, record an audio track with you singing and then delete it afterwards. I mean, there's lots of ways you can go about this. So hopefully you enjoyed today's uh, vlog, and I will see you tomorrow. Be sure to sign up for notifications and subscribe on YouTube. And if you're looking to learn to compose, head over to artofcomposing.com and you can learn to compose there with my courses. So I will talk to you.